David here with Fig Boudin Pens. Today I have for you the final in my top 10 series for this year. In previous weeks, I've covered other price ranges, but today's list will cover pens which cost over $250. The granddaddies of them all, or at least the granddaddies of my collection. In regard to the rules I set for myself for this list, uh, they are, are each pens that are currently in my collection. Uh, in addition, I, you know, I need to have owned the pen for a significant period of time. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've picked up a, a couple of pens that might very well deserve a place on this list, but I haven't had them for long enough to uh, feel good about having them supplant any of the pens that made it onto this list this year. Uh, in regard to brand diversity, uh, this top 10 list is comprised of pens from nine different brands. Uh, counting the honorable mentions, there's actually 13 different brands. When it comes to purchasing uh, a pen price in this or a pen in this price range, uh, I have a tendency to do a good deal of research and purchase with as much education as possible in order to minimize the chance of wasting money on something that I really won't care for. Uh, this is just not the price range to experiment or take a flyer on a pen just to see if you like it, or at least for me it isn't. Okay, let's start with the honorable mentions. There are a number of pens with just which just missed making this list, but you know I've whittled it down to a few that I would really be remiss to not discuss. And the first on that list is the Canalia Nui Nalu. The Canalia Pen Company was founded by the husband and wife team of Hugh and Car Carol Shear. Uh, the company and their products are themed around their love for the Hawaiian Islands and the connection they feel with the unique locations and elements of nature found there. Uh, Kenalea has a number of pens in their line, uh, all of which have some amazing acrylics. Each pen is based on either a location or an element of nature, and each pen has an accompanying picture which serves as an inspiration for the pen. And you know, something I feel they've done really well is capturing the essence of the inspiration photo. This particular model is called the Nui Nalu, which translates to big wave in Hawaiian. And this is the inspiration picture, a really nice pipeline wave from the North Shore of Oahu. Uh, and I think it captures that very nicely. This finial is one of my favorite features on this pen. Uh, just take a look at that blue and white swirling. The pattern really reminds me of the tube of a wave. I just love it. It's just beautiful. Uh, the pen has a number six Yovo steel nib, which is the main point of contention with some folks in regard to this pen. Uh, the pens in the Canalia line retail for just under $400. Uh, the feeling a lot of people have is that the pen in this price range should come with either a gold or another precious metal nib. Uh, and that's a valid point. Uh, I will say that the absence of any branding makes this nib look a little bit plain, uh, but uh, it does perform very well, and the nib is very pleasant to use. Would I like to have a gold nib? Sure. Would I like for the pen to be about $100 less expensive? Yes. But I did purchase this pen at its full retail price, and I haven't regretted it at all. In the end, it's the acrylics of the pen which are the highlight of any Canalea pen. Uh, and the color combinations and transitions that they achieve in their acrylics are unique to say the least and are just stunning. Next on the honorable mentions list uh, is a Pelican, and that Pelican is the M1000. The M1000 is Pelican's flagship pen and is a definitely worthy enough to have that distinction. Uh, it's the largest pen that they offer, and while there's been a couple of special editions in different colors, the M1000 typically comes in either all black or the green stripe. I really wish they'd offer a blue stripe, which they currently do not. Uh, the uh, Pelican M1000 is a very large pen. When I first purchased it, I, you know, I thought it was just comically huge, but over time I've really grown to love larger pens, so this size feels about right to me. Uh, the nib on the M1000 is very large and very beautiful. Uh, as with most Pelican nibs, uh, the shoulders aren't quite as wide, but I just really love the scroll work and the Pelican logo on this uh, two-toned 18 karat nib. If you're considering purchasing uh, an M1000, uh, the nib sizes can be a bit deceiving. Uh, this one here is a fine, but it lays down a rather thick line that you might consider on other nibs to be a medium or even a broad. Uh, it lays down a thicker line than the medium nib on my M805. 
uh, you know, it's actually one of my favorite nibs in my collection. It has a really distinct feel to it, which kind of makes me second guess why I have this as an honorable mention and not in the actual top 10. That's what's so tough about this final list. It kind of pains me a little to have uh, left each of these honorable mentions off the list. Next up, we have another very large pen, and that would be the Delta Dolce Vita Oversized. Now, the Dolce Vita Oversized isn't a very long pen. I mean, you can see here uh, that it's considerably smaller than the Nui Nalu. The oversize uh, really comes into play when you look at its tremendous girth. Uh, it's just a very thick pen, and just look how thick that section is. You know, I like a thick section, but uh, this is really on the edge of being extreme, but I do still find it comfortable. I mentioned this previously, but if you're looking into deltas, they have a number of different pens which actually look very similar, but are priced significantly different. For example, this is the Delta uh, Dolce Vita Oversized, and then this is the Dolce Vita Federico Oversized. Um, this one retails for around $700, and this one retails for around $300. Now, they look very similar. Uh, at a later point in time, when I'm reviewing uh, one of these pens, I'll actually go into all their differences, but at first glance, they look a lot alike. Um, why do I like this pen? Uh, you know, first of all, I enjoy the stark contrast between the uh, black and the mother of pearl orange acrylic. You know, I will admit that the first time I saw this color uh, design, it really didn't appeal to me. But over time, it's really grown on me. And the, the really bold statement uh, that uh, a lot of Delta pens make is something that's uh, really grown on me. The pen has a rather low profile ebonite feed and a very nice 14K nib. Each Delta I own with their gold nibs has been outstanding. Okay, two more honorable mentions. Second to last, we have a pen that I recently reviewed, which is the Pilot Custom Heritage 823 in the amber finish. The 823 has a much different look to it than all the other pens in Pilot's Custom Heritage line and a different filling system as well. The 823 is a vacuum filler, which I do find a lot of fun to use. Uh, I like this translucent amber acrylic as well. It's tough to see, but you can see the ink in the barrel, which I like. Uh, the 823 is a good size pen that <clears throat> feels really great in the hand as well. For me, this 14 karat gold nib didn't really perform well out of the box, but after I had some work done on it, it's fantastic. I just love it. Uh, the fact that I needed to have some work done on it isn't the reason why it's outside the top 10. I'm not holding that against it. Um, I've been very fortunate in my uh, more expensive pen purchases. I've only received a small number of them that have had significant issues right out of the box. Um, but the Pilot is very nice, very high quality pen uh, that is a favorite of mine and a favorite of uh, many other folks out there. Okay, last honorable mention, and it's a pen from Aurora. And that is the Aurora Optima. While the majority of pens on this list are a bit larger, the Optima packs a big punch in its compact size. Uh, the Optima's resin really has a nice quality feel to it, uh, and that it's a piston filler. And it also has a really nice ink window. A lot of times the ink window can kind of break up the flow of a design, but not in the case of the Optima. I feel they did a really good job of incorporating the window into uh, the end of the section in a way that doesn't feel like a chunk has been taken out of the middle of the pen. Um, in addition, the, the medium 14 karat gold nib on this Optima is really pleasant as well. Uh, it's decently smooth with a, a good amount of what I call uh, good feedback. Uh, I've yet to review this Optima, but I will definitely get to it in the near future. Okay, enough with the honorable mentions. Let's get on to the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is something special from the Edison Pen Company, and that is the Menlo Pump Filler in the light blue translucent acrylic swirl. You know, when I first saw this material, I was just stunned. I thought it was the most beautiful pen I'd ever seen. Just look at these swirls. They're just incredible. There's a three-dimensionality to the ribbons of color that make this pen different from anything else I've ever seen before. It's truly stunning and very vibrant. And here's a look at the number six steel Yovo nib. You know, I like the Edison logo, which has a nib resembling a light bulb in homage to Thomas Edison, who's the inspiration behind the name of the company. 
Gold nibs are available for an additional cost if you'd like on this pen, but the steel nib, while a bit firm, performs outstanding. Um, the Minlo has a very unique pump filling system, which was modeled after the system of the Parker Vacumatic. You take off the blind cap to reveal this pump, and you just submerge the nib in ink and simply depress the pump a few times. Um, inside the barrel is a feeder tube, which will suck up a bit of ink, and each pump gives you uh, a decent fill. Uh, this Edison Menlo, uh, just in my opinion, might be my most beautiful pen. I, I really just smile whenever I use it. It's just stunning, and, and it's an incredible writer to boot. I just love it. Coming in at number nine, we have a pen with a classic look, and that is the Mont Blanc 149. You know, it's really funny how your opinion changes over time on things. Um, you know, right here is a Mont Blanc Classique 164 ballpoint. I used to think this pen was huge. Then, after I picked up a Mont Blanc 146, I thought that was huge. And you can see how much of a difference there is between these two pens. Uh, and then here is the uh, 146 compared to the 149 uh, and that the 149 is significantly larger and now I really prefer kind of pens of this size more than I do the smaller pens uh, just look how the uh, the 149 looks compared to the 164 how much there's a difference and I used to think this one was enormous you know, I just love the size of the 149 and the nib is one of the most beautiful in my collection. Uh, Montblanc can make some very beautiful nibs. Uh, there's some who feel that this classic look is a bit on the boring side, but I enjoy it. I think it looks classy. Uh, and the, uh, it's a look that's been countlessly replicated by many other companies. Uh, and for good reason. It just works. Uh, the 149 is a piston filler with a very large ink capacity, and there's just something special about looking down at the pen in your pocket and seeing the snowflake staring back at you. On to number eight, where we have a very unique pen from Visconti, and that would be the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Um, the, the Visconti Homo Sapiens comes in a few different models, and I own two. Uh, here we have the Dark Ages, and then this is the sterling silver model. Uh, we'll look at the sterling silver one just because the trim is easier to see. Um, when Visconti first launched the Homo sapiens, they offered it in this sterling sil silver model with the main difference between it and the other models being sold today is the extra set of uh, double bands on the barrel, which aren't present on this model. Um, the pen is made from a material which is 50% bas uh, basaltic lava and 50% resin. There's a couple of different kinds of lava, but basaltic lava is the bright red-orange lava that you see spewing out of active volcanoes. Uh, and this unique material is slightly hygroscopic, uh, which means that it can absorb things like oils or wetness from your hand, or even ink. So when you're inking up this pen, you want to make sure that you wipe up the section quickly to avoid any stains. Uh, here's a close-up picture of the material. You can really see the pitting, which gives this pen a unique personality, which actually can vary from pen to pen. I've seen some more, uh, some with more pronounced pitting and uh, some others with more grayish accents than this particular pen. I love the distinct capping mechanism, which Visconti calls their hook safe locking system. Uh, and the uh, 23 karat palladium nib, uh, which they call their dream touch nib, is outstanding as well. Uh, this is one of those pens that's a conversation starter and that owning a pen made from lava is just downright cool. Coming in at number seven, we have a pen I picked up at the DC show this year, and that pen would be the Wall Eversharp Deco Band. Uh, this is a very large pen. It's made from ebonite, uh, and this is the rosewood finish. That's incredibly beautiful. Uh, and the trim is all gold-plated brass. The 14 karat number eight nib on the deco band is spectacular. Uh, this pen is offered with two different nibs. There's the super flex, and then there's the gold flex. I tested out both nibs before purchasing this pen, and while the super flex was outstanding and had a great deal of rather effortless flex to the nib, uh, the gold flex, which is more of a semi-flex nib, uh, had a little bit more was a little more suited for my uh, daily writing. 
Uh, then we have another very cool feature of this pen, which is the bright red feed. Just take a look at this. Uh, the feed is made from hard rubber and is coated in a bright red automotive lacquer. I mentioned this in my review of the Deco Band, but the story goes that the wife of Sid, one of the gentlemen who runs the Wall Eversharp Company, uh, had a favorite pair of uh, Louboutin shoes, which are famous for having red soles. And the color of this section was inspired by the soles of those shoes. Uh, this pen is enormous, uh, but I still find it comfortable in my hand. Uh, and the ebonite provides a, a bit of warmth. Uh, this nib performs outstanding and has a distinct little bit of feedback, which I really enjoy. Uh, the Decker Band has what's called the uh, Chilton style of pneumatic filling system. Uh, you actually twist off the end to extend a tube, and then you cover the small hole at the end of your finger and push down on your tube, uh, down on the tube while it's submerged in ink, and, and then you let go in order to fill it. Uh, it's just fun to use and something that's a little different. Coming in at number six, we have another Visconti. And that Visconti is the Davina Elegance. This is an attention-grabbing pen that is very unique and very cool. Uh, the Davina Elegance is made from acrylic and uh, silver and is twisted in a shape that in mathematical terms is called the golden ratio. Uh, I'll get it a lot deeper into that, what that means uh, when I do a full review of the pen, but just know that there is a purpose and intention behind the twist of this pen. It isn't just random. Uh, the dark blue acrylic has a really nice amount of pearlescence that will give the pen a really different look depending on the angle in which you view it. Uh, in addition, the contrast between the acrylic and the silver is just perfect. I've mentioned it previously, but it kind of bugs me when things don't quite line up right on a pen. But check this out. No matter which of the hook safe threads you use, the spiraling silver always matches up. And even better, when you post the pen, there's actually six different orientations you could post the pen, and on each of them, the ribbons of silver line up appropriately. I just love that. Uh, the cap on the uh, Davina Elegance is rather heavy, so posting it makes it rather unwieldy. Uh, the filling system on this pen is a little unique. You pull out this little knob at the back of the barrel and then twist it to operate the captured converter. Um, the medium 23 karat palladium nib on this pen is very wet, very juicy, and lays down a rather thick medium line. Uh, it's really unlike anything else in my collection, and, and I feel it's one of the most beautiful pens I own. Okay, at number five, we have the pen that was number one on my top 10 list at the end of last year, and that is the Pelican M805. You know, I really debated whether or not the M805 or the M1000 was going to have a place on this list. Um, the writing experience be between these two pens are very different. Uh, it isn't just the case of the M1000 being the same pen but larger. Well, the actual pen is like that, but the nibs vary a great deal. Uh, the nib on the M805 is more firm, and uh, the one on the uh, M1000 has considerably more flex to it. And in the end, it really came down to a couple of factors. Um, first of all, I just love the blue stripes on this pen. These blue stripes are on the short list of my favorite specific features of any pen I own. I just really love the color. Uh, I also like the, uh, that the M805 is offered with a silver colored trim. I believe this particular one has palladium trim. Uh, now, that's how Pelican's numbering system works. An M800 will have gold trim and an M805 will have silver colored trim, uh, which on most pens I personally prefer. Uh, there's a special edition of the M1000 offered with a silver plated trim, but that one retails for about twice as much as you could pick up a standard M1000. Uh, the M805 feels just about perfect in the hand for me. Uh, the section is comfortable, and you can even use this pen posted if you like. I don't find that the cap back weights the pen too much. And the medium 18 karat gold nib on this M805 is buttery smooth. Uh, with this nib, you don't get tons of line variation, but it's an excellent writing experience. Uh, you know, the only thing I'd change about this pen really is the nib. I really like the looks of Pelican's uh, two-toned nibs, uh, but that's just an aesthetic thing. The nib itself is very, very good, and I'm very fond of this pen. Coming in at number four is not only a pen, but the Sailor King of Pen. Uh, 
Now, to begin with, I had wondered why it was called the King of Pen rather than the King of Pens. And that uh, I believe it has something to do with how the plural nouns are translated from Japanese. I'm by no means a linguist, but I believe that's why. Uh, the King of Pen comes in a number of different styles and finishes, and this particular model is made from uh, all ebonite, except for the section, uh, which is very warm to the touch and has an elasticity uh, a unique texture and a very distinctive odor, which actually minimizes over time. I've had this one for a while and it really doesn't smell at all. Uh, that a unique feature of this pen is the slow progressive color change over time it will have from its current kind of jet black to more of a deep black brown. Now, exposure to direct sunlight and fluorescent light will quicken this metamorphosis. Um, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, the section is actually resin and this Identical section, a uh, King of Pens section and nib are used in uh, several different pens. I have this same new, uh, nib unit on four different pens and each of them, each of the nibs are mediums but write slightly different. They each have their own personality. And the nib that is on this King of Pen right here is my absolute favorite. Of all the nibs in my collection, I love this nib the most. Uh, it's just a bit smoother than the others and it has it's just glorious to write with. I, I just really, really love it. Okay, down the home stretch. Only three pens remain. And coming in at number three is a pen that I reviewed just this past week. Uh, and that is the Omas uh, My Lord Arco Celluloid. You know, I kind of find it interesting that Omas pens don't get that much love from the masses in the pen community. Uh, you know, I've posted a few reviews of Omas pens, and each one doesn't necessarily garner as much interest as some of the other reviews I have. You know, maybe it's the, the fact that they uh, aren't currently producing pens, uh, but you know that might change here in the near future. Uh, or maybe it's because that uh, it's not that uh, approachable of a brand. For the most part, they only make high-end pens. They really don't have many entry-level pens. But uh, I just love this Arc Arco Celluloid. I think it is just stunning. This uh, is actually, this is really one of my favorite pens. Uh, just look at the way the light reflects off the two sides of this material. It just looks amazing. Uh, you can really see the different layers of the celluloid. And I really like that the material will vary from pen to pen. No two pens with this celluloid are going to look the same. They'll each have their own look and personality. Uh, you know, I really love the size of this pen. And that after I had Mike Matsuyama do some work on this nib, it's one of my favorite in my entire collection. It's just amazing. You know, I tend to be drawn to pens that are unique, and this celluloid certainly t makes this Omas Malord unique. Uh, I mentioned this in my review last week, but I was on the search for this pen for quite some time. With Omas no longer around, these pens were becoming increasingly difficult to obtain. So it looked, took a lot of searching before I found one. Uh, and you know, if I was able to just go to any retail site and pick one up, it still would have been an amazing pen. But adding that level of difficulty and acquisition makes the uh, My Lord Arco a little bit more special to me. Number two is a pen that was very close to being named number one on this list. It's that special. It's so special I actually keep it in its own little sleeve. Uh, one, because I don't want any harm to come to it, and two, because it's just too large to fit in my case where I keep my most treasured pens. And that is the Danny Trio Tammy Nuri on Shu on Genkai. Now, I know that name is a bit of a mouthful. If you want to uh, know what each of the parts of that name mean, you can actually check out my full review on this beautiful pen. Uh, this is an ebonite pen treated with Japanese Arushi lacquer. Uh, in my review, I go into more detail about Arushi, what Arushi lacquer is and uh, the extraordinary process that it takes to make one of these pens. It takes months. The, uh, the Nuri Shuri, who is the, uh, the artisan who applies the Arushi lacquer, is a true craftsman and an artist. You know, I really just like, love that the artist's signature and mark are on the pen as well. It really helps remind me that this pen was not made by a machine, that there was a person uh, who cared for this pen for quite some time. Uh, the deep red of this pen really doesn't pick up that well on camera, but you can see here on the cap what it looks like. And I just really love the corners of this pen where some of the lighter color peeks through. It's very subtle, subtle, but still incredible. And just look at this nib. Uh, the very large nib is, is it performs uh, amazing. But as far as looks, 
uh, this is hands down my favorite nib. I just think the stamping on this nib is incredibly cool. You know, I like that at first glance, this pen isn't really flashy. If you knew nothing about pens, uh, you wouldn't think this pen is anything special other than just being huge. Uh, there's a stylish minimalism that I really like about this pen. There's just the perfect combination of craftsmanship and performance. So that brings me to number one on my list. While the Danny Trio came close, it was going to take a great deal to knock this pen out of my top spot. And that pen is the Classic Pens LB5. Uh, and I have two of them. Uh, this one here is called to Tensui, or Raindrops in Space Blue. And then here we have the Koseki, or Metal Ore, in Diamond Brown. Uh, the difference between these two are the color of the material uh, and then the trim and the nib on the Tensui are rhodium plated as opposed to the gold plating of the uh, Kuseki and the gold nib. Um, now you might have seen reviews of the LB5 on several different review channels and for the most part everyone raves about it. But what makes it go so what makes it so special? Now I go into more detail and more in-depth on my review about what makes this pen so special to me, but there's four main reasons. Uh, one is the material. Uh, the diffusion bonded acrylic is just stunning. Uh, it costs about 10 times much as much as much most standard acrylics, and the layers really make for a very unique look. Uh, two is the size. The LB5 is based on the Sailor King of Pens and is just slightly longer but feels great in the hand. Three is this Sailor King of Pen nib. Uh, the King of Pen nib is one of my favorites and I really love the precision as well as the distinct feedback of Sailor nibs. Um, the ink capacity in the converter for this pen is not the largest, uh, but it really doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, I like changing inks around a lot anyways. And the fourth reason is it's a very limited edition. There are seven different varieties of the LB5 and only 50 of each color was produced. So if you own an LB5, you feel like you're part of a fraternity. So putting all of these considerations together, the Classic Pen LB5 is a worthy recipient of the top spot on this list. So, to recap, at number 10, we have the Edison Menlo Pump Filler. Coming in at number 9 is the Mont Blanc 149. Number 8, the Visconto Homo Sapiens. Then at number 7, there's the Wall Ever Sharp Deco Band. In 6th place is the Visconti Divina Elegance. At number 5 is the Pelican M805. Number four, the Sailor King of Pen Ebonite. Coming in at number three is the Omas Malord Arco Celluloid. Number two is the Danny Trito Tammy Nuri on Shu on Genkai. And at number one, we have the Classic Pens LB5. Of the top 10, there's only one which I haven't reviewed as of this video, that being the uh, Visconti Divina Elegance. So if you'd like significantly more detail on any of these pens, uh, please check out the full reviews. Uh, it's fun to see how this list has changed over time. And I, you know, I feel it might change significantly next year as well. I have a couple of pens which I just recently purchased, which will be very difficult to leave off the list and have a couple more on order that won't arrive for another four or five months that could potentially make it as well. We'll see. I've enjoyed putting these lists together and hope that they've given you some ideas of what you might want to go out and pick up for yourself. Um, feel free to leave a comment below to let me know what you think of this list. I enjoy hearing everyone's thoughts. And if you like what you hear, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well so you can be notified when I come out with my weekly reviews. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.